Hi, my name is Jenny, I'm a digital artist, and if this is your first time watching my video, that's probably because this is my first video. Today I will show you all my favorite tricks and techniques on how I draw glass using different tools and techniques in Clip Studio Paint. This video is actually a submission for Clip Studio Paint's Tips of the Month, so I hope you enjoy! In the first part of this video, I'll explain the basic principles of transparency, and then afterwards, you'll get to see me speed painting a mermaid inside a glass bottle, and I'll explain every step of the way, how I work, and give all my different tips and techniques. So before I start drawing, I think it's really important to explain how transparent objects work. Basically, transparent objects are things like in the past group. What that means is that in order to create the illusion of transparency in your drawings, you have to observe how the light and shadows, reflections, and contrast values work or behave on that object in different environments. Next, let's talk about values. Values define how light or dark a given color can be. The best way to understand them is by looking at a gradient or scale. So on the left side you can see really light values and on the right really dark ones. When you create something with very close values, like on the right side, it has very low contrast, but if you use values that are from different sides, you get a much more defined, higher contrast in your drawing. Next, I want to talk about opacity. Opacity is how much an object can block light. Clip Studio Paint actually lets you lower the opacity either in the layers you create, you can lower layers opacity, or you can change the opacity of the brushes or erasers you use, and I find that's really really helpful when you try to draw transparent things, because that's basically how they work. Taking what we learned, when we see a transparent object and look through it, the values we see become lower. They have less contrast. So when we look through a window, there is less contrast than what we would see if we were looking straight at the environment. Let's talk about sketching. When you want to sketch glass, you really want to look at the object you're trying to sketch and understand where it has the thickest parts, where it has more glass, where it has detailing and then add lines according to that. When you're done with a sketch, you want to move on to adding highlights and shadows and reflections. I mainly use hard edge brush for the highlights and a mix of soft, soft and hard brushes with a little bit of erasing for shadows and reflections. If you're not sure about the difference between hard and soft brushes, here's a little image to help you understand. Next I'm going to talk about how to create the shadow glass creates. I will explain a lot more about this stage in the next part of the video when I show you how I, how I paint with these steps. But basically, the shadow looks like a mirror of the glass you're drawing. So the shadow will have lighter parts where there are highlights and darker areas where the glass is darker. It will basically mirror what we drew. And there is a very easy way to mimic that using Clip Studio Paint tools like the Free Transform tool. So with that said, let's get started. Step 1. Sketch and line up. I started by creating a sketch with the pencil tool in Clip Studio Paint. I really like the texture it has. So I sketched out a cute little mermaid. She's one of my original characters and she's stuck in a bottle right now. Uh, so that we can see how glass works, how reflection works around this character. 
Now, when we draw some sprint items, the first thing we want to do is add color to anything that is not transparent. So I'm adding color to this little mermaid and to the cloak in the bottom. I like keeping it simple, so this is just base colors and a little bit of shading. Here is a better view of the sketch. So, on to step 3, adding the background. This is a very easy way to make transparent objects be seen. In a layer underneath the original sketch I did, I'm adding a simple background using the G pen, just adding different colors, blues and turquoise, and blending them together using Gaussian Blur tool, which you can find by going to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I am also using the fingertip tool to create a table-like look effect by using downward strokes, making everything bigger. The background you create doesn't even have to be anything complicated. You can keep it very simple, even a solid color would be great. That's because we'll be using really light colors for the highlights and we want them to be seen. Step 4. Adding a base color to the glass. Next, I add a base color. I went with a very light blue because this glass doesn't have a lot of color. Maybe it's a little bit tinted. The more transparent the object you draw is, the less color you want to add or the lighter you want to make it. If your glass has a certain color, like let's say red, then I would make this glass have a red base color. But Basically, fill it in however you want. Sometimes I use the wand tool to select uh, my sketch and then draw inside it in a layer under underneath. And sometimes I just freehand it. I really enjoy filling in all the colors. When you're done with filling in the color, lowers the opacity and you're ready for adding shadows and highlights. So when adding shadows, I think it's really important to first of all pick a light source or at least use a reference. I started by using a lasso tool and selecting my darkest areas. I used the G-Paint tool to fill it in and lower the opacity. Of course, this is all done on a separate layer from the base color. I used a layer above it and just started adding in the places where I thought it should be darkest. And the lip of the bottle, the bottom of it, some parts of the sides where you see uh, two sides of the glass and they kind of like hide each other. If you look closely at a cup or a bottle, so areas like the bottom, holders, scarves, the neck or lip of bottles are thicker and narrower, so they usually have more shadows and reflect more light in those areas. Areas like the main part of the bottle where it's wider, it's more hollow, so you usually see less shadows or lights in those parts. It's really important to use a darker shade when you're doing this step, but I think messing around with it and seeing what works best for you is really important. Now that we're done with the step, let's move on to highlights. On a new layer, I select a lighter color. I usually don't like to use pure white or pure black when shading or adding highlights. But I start adding it in using a very hard brush. Usually shadows on glass have this really, really, really defined look. And a hard edged brush will really help give that feeling more realistic vibes or at least more glass-like vibes and I start adding it in. Use different blocks and different shapes, follow the natural shape of the bottle. Think about it as ellipses or different lines that define the 3D-ness of it. I think that following the natural shape can really help 
define what that bottle looks like. And a lot of the highlights can be seen usually at the edges and of the body of the bottle, like right at the edge where it ends. We can also see a lot of shadows there, but it's a really cool play of contrast between light and dark. When you're done with the highlights, change the layer mode to soft light. I really like the effect it gives. You can also use luminosity, overlay, screen, any blending mode that works for you. You can find the blending mode right next to the opacity and play with it, mess around with it, look what looks best. In this case, I wasn't very happy with the result, so I just duplicated the layer and I think it gave it a much more dramatic effect. Next, we're gonna start adding reflections. So, first you want to make sure that you're happy with what you did before. Repeat the last two steps of adding sh uh, shadows and highlights until you're satisfied with the results. I also used a soft brush with a lighter color because it gave off a sandy effect which made the glass a bit more textured which, which I really liked. I added a few more highlights and used the gouache brush as an eraser. You can find that right below where you pick the colors. I used it as an eraser to erase any parts I didn't like because it keeps the same texture of the brush just as an eraser. For every different color I add, I'm opening a new layer and seeing what works best. So in a new layer, I add more shading, I set it to multiply to give more dramatic effect. And again, just keep repeating, fixing all the shadows and highlights. Don't just stop and give up and say, oh well, it doesn't look very good. When you push through and add more details and more layering, just this very, very delicate process of softly adding layers and lowering their opacity, of very, very delicately adding the color and defacing it and changing the opacity, that play of what can pass through or what is very, very harsh creates that glass-like effect very well. Now I'm adding a little bit of shadow for the glass where it touches a different surface. Remember when we talked about overcast shadow? This is basically it. It kind of mimics what we see in the glass. So using the free transform tool, which you can find by using Ctrl Shift T, or by going to the top bar and selecting Edit, Transform, Free Transform. So again, as you can see, I'm adding highlights at the edge, just like I added on the bottle, just on the reflection. I blurred the whole thing using Gaussian Blur tool. You can try to paint it freehand, or I can show you a really cool, a really cool trick at the end of the video on how to create an overcast shadow very, very easily. The glass reflects the colors around it, so using the color picker tool, I add the same colors with a very, very soft brush near where those colors are, just on the glass bottle. And that gives off this really, really cool reflective surface kind of feel and really brings that to life. You don't have to add this part, but I think that if you pay attention to this type of details, it really, really, really makes a difference. I think the thing that helped me the most was using the brush as the eraser tool because it gave me a lot of freedom not to be afraid to have to fix anything by keep layering and layering and layering color. Next, we're gonna add some water inside the bottle. After you're happy with all the different shadows and what you create, I add a new layer and use white to go over the edges of the water. So any place the water touches, I add a white 
effects at the edge, so around the hair, around the hands, where it touches the bottle, and at small waves of ripples with soft circular lines. I add small dots to create more of a bubbly or wavy effect, and then start drawing more bubbles inside the water. I downloaded a bubble brush and then on a different layer set it to add glow so it looks white and using a white brush kept adding small bubbles using the g-pen brush and I think that the thing about water when it's very very transparent and not like inside the ocean where it reflects the sky you can really get the feeling of water by what's inside of it and not by the water itself so small bubbles a mermaid weeds uh, waves things like that will give that watery feeling Now, just keep repeating all the steps you just learned. Use different colors, different brushes, keep layering it, play around. I think that a lot of the time, art is about having fun. A really cool trick that you can use to make glass look like it's glowing is open a new layer on top of everything else and then use a layer set to add glow or luminosity or anything that makes it really really bright and using a light color give it that glowy effect or look just around it like sort of a halo effect and that really really brings everything out. I also added small rays of light inside the water to make it look like water is passing through it. Again using just a light blue color and set to overlay or just any layer will be good and really really bring out those colors, bring out that glow. I use the fingertip tool to smudge it a bit and then also use the flare tool as you can see. See how it makes everything look really really glowy and pretty and again if you don't like it or you think it's too dramatic you can lower the opacity or if you want it to be even more dramatic you can duplicate the layer and really 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 bring out those colors. I'm just adding a few more small details to the mermaid, a bit of highlights to reflect and the light source that is coming from the bottle, a few small finishing touches and we're almost done. Adding the reflection from the hand using a light orange color, more pink from the tail to create reflection there. So now let's make the mermaid fin a bit more transparent. Using the lasso tool on the layer, I drew the base colors, I just lower the opacity and then add some more detailing on top on a different layer. So on a layer set to multiply, I added a bit more shadows and then I proceeded to draw a table that looks like it's a more reflective surface 
and just use the colors that were already existing on the drawing and the fingertip tool, Gaussian blur tool, to make everything come together. Now let me show you a really cool tip on how to create the overcast shadow. By flattening the entire image to one layer and copying it, I pasted it on top, on the very very top layer and I really like the effect but then I duplicated it again and using the free transform tool just turned it into a shadow. I set the layer to soft light to give it a soft effect and then went to layer, add a new correction layer, color balance to just make all the colors work together and look really pretty. I don't have a set color palette when I started drawing, but by messing around with how much every color sends out, you really really get a cool result. Okay, so those were all my tips and tricks on how I draw glass. Thank you so much for watching and sticking till the end. I really really hope you like the final result. I added a bit more color adjustments to really really make it stand out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, like it, and Tell me down below in the comments what you'd like to see me draw next.